today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, you cry all the time. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles! Close your eyes, I'd love to see you tomorrow. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The Roaring Twenties. The Jazz Age. The year 1920 began what would become the most prosperous, most progressive, most inventive, most liberated decade in our still young nation's history. Its deeds and personalities would echo as legend across the USA for the next 10 decades. Edison lit the night for our safety. Marconi brought entertainment directly into our homes. Darwin challenged our beliefs about our origins and thereby our very foundations of religious beliefs. Science and medicine was busy saving thousands of lives with the discovery of penicillin, insulin, vitamins, and vaccines for diseases like measles and tuberculosis. Or it gave us a whole new attitude about mobility. And altered our material world with the new notion of buy now, pay later. That would forever change the American economic structure and continued to a cataclysmic end in 1929. But while New York streets like Wall Street, Madison Avenue, and Broadway were taking on a life of their own, across the Hudson River in nearby Patterson, New Jersey. Frederick and Catherine Singer were bringing into the world a new life of their own. On July 7, 1925, the third of their five children was born to Fred and Kitty, Regina Rose Singer, who would always be called Jean. I was born in the Barnett Hospital, which was a Jewish hospital and the only one in Patterson, a city with a population of 100,000. I was baptized at Our Lady of Victories Catholic Church in Patterson, New Jersey. By the end of the decade, the Roaring Twenties had come to a crashing end and the Great Depression was well underway and still in its descent. But even in difficult times, young Jean could find joy in special occasions. And two of her fondest memories came at the same time. Her seventh birthday and her first Holy Communion at Our Lady of Victory's Church. It was my special day and I got special attention. I can still remember the time spent getting my picture taken at Pennington Park in my white dress and veil. It made my mother happy too. My only childhood experience I can remember, prior to this, 
is starting kindergarten at the age of four and a half. I liked school immediately and knew the joy of learning even at this young age. Again, at the age of seven, I had my first and only childhood birthday party and my mother let me invite seven friends and made me a Shirley Temple dress, which I cherished like a piece of gold. Because two of my happiest occasions happened in my seventh year, and my birthday numerically is seven seven, I have always felt seven was my lucky number, whether alone or with other sevens. As I was born during the depression, and my mother and father were just managing, we had very few special treats. Only food that was needed was put on the table, and that at portions. We never had sweets or even fruits, unless they were given to us. If we were still hungry, we had to fill up on bread and butter. But at least we didn't go hungry, as so many families around us did. So you can understand why I remember my first Holy Communion and my seventh birthday party so vividly. They were really special treats. I have two brothers and two sisters who all live in New Jersey. My brother Joe, the oldest, was born May 12, 1918. He sold papers on the city hall corner of Patterson, New Jersey from the time he was five years old until he finished high school at the age of 17. He worked every day after school and never was able to eat dinner with us, which was every night promptly at 5 p.m. Joe always had a warmed over dinner. It was a treat for him to have dinner with us on Sunday afternoon, his only day off. Sunday was our family get together day. Dinner was always at 1 p.m. My sisters and brothers and I all attended 9 a.m. mass and catechism, and it was a mile or more walk to church. My mother would come later at 11 a.m. While we were all gone, my father would prepare the Sunday dinner as he enjoyed cooking and was a great cook. Well, I think it was interesting that when, you know, she was, um, came here, you know, came to Vegas, she didn't know how to drive, she had to learn how to drive and all that. Hmm. No, I didn't know how to drive. I had to learn because they had no transportation here. Wow. They didn't have any buses. Yeah. And the only place that, that out in the strip with that, uh, the Italian restaurant, that was a couple of miles, El Rancho Vegas, that's all. Hmm. If you didn't have a car, you didn't get, if you didn't have a car, you couldn't get there. Yeah. Nothing, no, no transportation. Hmm. Widow Seat Cab Company was here then, and that was it. What was your first car? It was a 1936 Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you have any uh, favorite teachers in school? No, I went to a Catholic high school. All Catholic, all nuns. So no favorites. <laughs> all nuns. All okay. nuns. Then. There were no teachers. They were all mm. nuns. And we have one man. His name was Mr. Steiger, S-T-E-I-T-E-R, and he he was uh, in there and took us on bus trips and everything. Oh wow. Stock, my first name Steiger, S-T-E-I-G-E-R, mm. and he took us see, under his wing and took us on bus trips where we would uh, put our bicycles in the the uh, Box car of the hood of the of the of the uh, wherever the station was, and and we'd go. Then when we got to the little town we wanted to get to, we would get off the box car and and, and uh, drive and drive all around, and then mm. come back on the box car again. Wow. Put our bicycles in the box car. <laughs> that was a school trip. Yeah, that was a trip. That's great. Hmm. <laughs> but. You never got to go any place if you didn't do something like that. Yeah. And everything was easier then than it is now. It was so yeah. easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And the phone number, I remember our phone number was 46. I remember that. That was our phone number before you came here. Yeah. 46. Wow. And then there were two other three people on the line at the same time you were. Yep. Oh, it was yeah. Party lines, yeah. Oh. It was an interesting town to come to before the, the, uh, the right, all, all the corporations. It's all, what do you call corporation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything, they do this, they do that. And there's nothing, everything before was so different. Mm -hmm. well, this mm -hmm. is hard to see, but that's her mom. That's with Meyer, her little sister. 
Right. No, and right. I don't know who that's Joe. That's a bigger town than I expected, really. It was a pretty big town. Yeah. I think there were 300,000 people there and then. Yeah, that's pretty big. When I came to Las Vegas, only 25,000. Right. You went down the street, you knew everybody. Yeah. And where were these pictures taken? You used to go to like a, a lake oh, or something? Up, up at Lake, lake of Pacon, up there, up by the lakes. Mm -hmm. They went to, that's where we went by, probably Lake Hepatcon is one of them. So when did you go there? Because you were, you were with your brothers and sisters, this was after you went back to visit oh. in Patterson. Uh -huh. That's your brother? No, that's, we, we don't know, that's a cousin. Of oh, I heard you know, yeah. <laughs> probably have heard, heard the Mo Dalitz, huh? I became very good friends with him when oh, I worked at the Desert Inn Hotel. Oh, very cool. Mo Dalitz, yeah. <laughs> one of the top criminals. <laughs> and, but you know, he was a nice guy. Yeah. I don't care what he was, he was just as nice as can be. Hmm. They were a whole bunch of them together. They were... Charming, they, probably. They stayed at the... Uh, at the um, where did they stay? I don't know where they stayed at the hotel. I think at the uh, at the Desert Inn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is super cool. Well, that was a beautiful hotel too. Yeah. Before they destroyed it. Mm -hmm. That was that was a fabulous hotel. It was. And all the hotels in Las Vegas, they destroyed yeah. the dunes. They destroyed that. Yep. Yeah. Stardust. And Stardust. Mm -hmm. That's the corporations came in took yeah. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll tell you, Las Vegas is not like it used to be. Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. I have a book here that tells about the best times in Moscow, 1958 to 1966 to 1960 to 1980. Uh. The best years here in Las Vegas. Mm. And everybody was so friendly. Mm -hmm. It was super. Yeah. You weren't afraid to go any place. You're never afraid to go any place. Mm. Never. 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 It was safe here then. Yeah. And uh, you went to school there the whole time? Yeah, I went to, yeah. Uh, uh, Bishop, that's where we went to, uh, let's see, uh, went to Jane jo St. John's uh, Catholic High School, right? Oh, okay, great. I think we're in a, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Let me go write that on as we're gone. Well, you have all of this. I'm just going to, you have your copy. I'm going to go ahead. Okay. Um, Janie, what grade thesis. school did you go to? Oh, it was great. <laughs> I have to think. It was great school. It was the first one there in Las And uh, let's see, it was, I said, it was great school number four. Number four, that okay. it was. But it was uh, high, high school, it was St. John's uh, High School. How about siblings? It sounds like you had brothers and sisters. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, there's seven of us, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. And but, but, Intermarriage, you know. Mm -hmm. So who did who? Which ones did you grow up with, Jeannie? Well, the was actually my oldest son, who was like I don't know how old he is now. He he was uh, seven years old when his father died, mm -hmm. and then I was uh, married Jake uh, after oh quite a few years later, and then he had he had. Uh, uh, four children, mm -hmm. and then we had two of our own. Oh, know. great! Mm -hmm. So that's five, six, seven all together. Mm -hmm. So we, if it's okay with you today, we'd like to go back to your childhood mm -hmm. and and talk about that through high school. Mm -hmm. So um, you were born in Patterson, New Jersey. What did your um, parents do? My father was a mountain. Great. He was, he was a mailman for 50 years. Did mom stay home? Yeah, my mom stayed home. Well, for till we got grown up to take over so she could go out and, and have her fun while we were taking care of the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like, a, a, I would say like a Lady Liberty that, well, I've come, I've come, I've come a long ways now to my time to, to bow out and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. She made that very prominent. Mm -hmm. We hardly ever saw her. Oh. <laughs> well, how many kids were in your family? There were, uh, there were four, five of us. Five. I'm the middle one. Mm -hmm. I have a, 
a sister and a brother uh, older than I have a, a younger uh, brother and sister. Uh -huh. Oh. Well, all I know is that my we were we were born during depression. Mm -hmm. I wasn't part, of, and we had to we had to start off to live. Mm -hmm. We did. We didn't have any extras. We were, if we if we got hungry, we filled it up on bread. We filled up on bread and butter. Mm -hmm. We never had a piece of fruit. We never had eggs. Yeah. My father did on Sunday because he was the mailman, so he was allowed to have eggs on Sunday. Uh -huh. So what do you, what do you think that did as far as shaping you as a person growing up during the depression? Well, it it made you so you just uh, you weren't wasteful. Mm -hmm. It made you value everything, but we were so con we're so conservative, you know, when you think about it. When I think I married to Jay, and, and we had, we we both have all the money we wanted to get along on. Mm -hmm. You know, what difference? <laughs> <laughs> right, but it probably kept you being more careful and conservative. Well, he was conservative too, so mm -hmm. between the two of us, well, he was, the whole fam Von Tobel family was. Mm -hmm. They were wonderful, yeah. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, they were quite a. Uh, they were very uh, leading citizens in Las Vegas. They sure. were absolutely. Yeah. So, if you look back on your school years, did you have um, special interests, things that you were excited about, or groups you were in? We couldn't belong to anything. We had to stay home. Mm -hmm. My mother says, I'm leaving. You stay home and take care of the house. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That was her feeling. Mm -hmm. How about your school? What was your favorite subject? Oh, algebra. Oh, your math. <laughs> well, yes, you became a CPA, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that, but I, was, I liked math. I liked math. I was really good at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you find that you were the only girl that... The best girl in class in math? Oh, I was noticed, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was noticed, yeah. Jeannie, you were born in Patterson? In Patterson, New Jersey, right. And, and what's your birth date? 7725. 7 7. All right. Uh -huh. 7 7 25. <laughs> and how about friends um, when you were little? Was it mostly? Hanging out with your brothers and sisters, or no. did you have a best friend? No, I had a, a good friend, and mm -hmm. the father and mother were prominent people in Las Vegas, and they had they didn't have any children, so I was like another child too, and I was glad because they gave me a lot of attention. Oh, that's great! Which we never got; we really didn't. Mm -hmm. Just because there were so many, or because your parents were out working all the time? But because we didn't have. But my parents, you know, they they couldn't afford to 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 spend any extra money. We never had anything extra to spend on. Sure, but we you weren't lucky, alone. We were lucky to get a to go to the beach once a year to to take how many uh, uh, buses to get to to the beach, hmm. Jones Beach, Jones Beach, and it was a it was a long day. It was an all day trip. You started early in the morning. You know. To, Ten o'clock at night. It was you had to take two buses to get there. Oh wow. <laughs> That's that sounds like fun though. Yeah, well it was a pleasure for us. Sure, sure. Especially what you know, it was really nice that we lived close to New York and we were able to go to to New York and see the museum and, and yeah. the zoo and when we had class when they had class picnics, class uh, uh Trips. Trips. Mm -hmm. That's when we got to go for five dollars. Oh wow! Wow, that was a lot. Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but, but back then, that was a lot of money. Five dollars. Yeah, sure. Was that was a lot of money, right? Yeah. And then for ten dollars, when we grew up, we could have an all-day trip in New York City and go see the uh, the, the bands. And, and, all of that. Jimmy Dorsey, Tommy Dorsey. Oh, neat. Frank Sinatra was popular then, and mm -hmm. then we saw the, the Radio City Music Hall. Mm -hmm. That was once a year. Nice. You saved your money. Well, that's that's what you saved your money for. Right, right. Did you, so what was your first job? Did you work while you were in school? A child? I was in an accounting office at 
Hancock, John Hancock uh, Insurance Company. In New Jersey? In New Jersey, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. So did uh, you do that during high school? Yeah. No, no, no. I, after high school, I oh. graduated. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have any job um, outside of the housework during high school in the summers? Any summer jobs? No, no, we didn't. Uh -huh. No. No, we didn't. There probably weren't many jobs to get. There was well, no, yeah. we had no way of getting there either. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a car. We didn't have a car until I hate to say, my father was a, when he went to to work. He had to take two buses to get to work to get to work on time to to sort the mail and to mm -hmm. and to. And to back to high school. Um, did you have a boyfriend? In high school, no, I never did. I never no. found anybody I liked. Oh, <laughs> so you were always discriminating. <laughs> no, I just was having a good time going to the dances. Oh, I didn't okay. want to be tied down to anybody. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so um, that's terrific. So you enjoyed dancing when you were in school? I went to all the dances I could go to yeah. once a week. <laughs> oh, wow, that's terrific. Were they high school dances or high community? School, oh, high school, yeah. And then, of course, I roller skated. I learned. I roller skated during my teenage years, too. Oh, very And I would fun. take two buses to get there. Yeah. Or walk all the way home, which was not very much fun either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was that at a park that you'd go roller skating or like a no, roller No, it was rink? a roller skating rink. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's where a bunch of your friends probably, was that a, a group activity usually? Well, no, I just... Went there and just danced with whoever would dance with me. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> great. Friends that I made, mm -hmm. especially an elderly fellow, he, he worried about me, so he took care of me. He made yeah. sure I got home all right. Oh. So that wasn't necessarily right in your town. It was pretty far away. No, no, it was in, in in Patterson. It was. Yeah, it was about. It was a. It was at least an hour or two. From the house to the roller skating rink. Oh wow! Yeah, and you had to take you had to take buses then. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a car. We didn't have a car. Right. right. Or you walked. Mm -hmm. That's why I was probably so strong because I we walked every place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we had we all, we lived on a hill. We lived on a hill, and it, would t it took you ever to go, get up the hill. There were two of them, or you could take the shortcut this way and come around the hill. Oh, I tell you, it took you. It took you about 20 minutes to get up those hills. Oh, wow, yeah. But they were great for, roll, for when the sleigh riding in the winter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you couldn't take those uh, those uh, deep hills. You had to take to go gradual. Sure. Know? And of course, there were no cars in those days, so you didn't have to worry about cars. But going down one of those hills, you could, if you Crash. fell, you could break your nose, and who knows what could have happened to you. But we weren't afraid of anything. Right. We weren't afraid of anything. So what is the difference in the ages of you and um, your oldest brother is how much older than you? Well, he went in the service. He was, they took him in the service. He was 18. I was only like 14 then. Okay. So there's so. about six years difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was his name? Joseph. Joseph. Mm -hmm. And you said you had an older sister too. Yeah, an older sister. Huh? What's her name? Margaret. M A R G A R A T. Mm -hmm. She, my mother told her she was going to be married and divorced three times in her life, and she was. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you uh, put on someone. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, she. She told me I was going to go many miles. My mother used to be a fortune teller. I oh. know. So she told me I was going to go many miles away, and uh, start a new life for myself. She seemed to have gotten two things right. Right. She, <laughs> yeah, she was right about it. But that's because I met my husband. He was in service, service at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. And that's that's where I met my husband, whose father was the first licensed mortician here in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. My father-in-law was the first licensed mortician <laughs> in Las Vegas. He and, uh, uh, what's his name, the one that had the... Uh, Bunker. No, no, no. They were oh, Bunker that. bought him out. He 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 sold out to Bunker when my husband became ill. It was it was no. It was just him by himself. Mm -hmm. He was a license. 
I thought 15 Fremont Street, just to right. start. Right. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what what was your younger sister's name and brother? Myra and White R.A. And she just died recently. Oh, sorry. Eight years difference between us. And brother, younger brother? He's in, he was right. seven, He's 78 when he died. Let's see, I don't know. He was 78, I think. He was, I don't know. Never. Freddie. Well, I would have been right in the many. Was, you guys were two years apart? Because Myra was eight. Maybe you were four years apart from Freddie. Freddie? How much? How much? Freddie might have been four years apart. Four yeah. years, yeah. So you guys were spread out a bit. Well, then. my mother, my brother was the oldest, and my sister was right after him. Mm -hmm. And then, then came... Uh, uh, me. Mm -hmm. I, was, I came in 1925. Mm -hmm. They were born in 19... Uh, they were born in 1918, 19, 19, 19, something like that. Mm -hmm. Then I came along in 1925. Mm -hmm. And then my brother came there four years later, and my sister came after that. Right, so that's mm -hmm. lots of uh, people to hang out with at home. Yeah, we were, were together. Yeah, we were together. Well, we had to. We couldn't go anyplace. Right. Yeah. You went down the street. You went to the park. You took a walk. Sure. You went places. Simple things. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to worry about things like you do now. Mm -hmm. Right. We didn't. Right. But then, when matters, when Patterson changed, and it was different. That was after I got married. Then you couldn't go down the streets at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the world has. No, that changed. was such a, it was a beautiful town, it really was, you always, was, you always, it was a silk, known as the silk mill, uh, she was a silk, it was a silk uh, mill factory there, they made uh, all kinds of lingerie and everything, women's lingerie. So, back um, when you were in high school, do you remember, like, maybe what your favorite song was, or did you have a favorite singer? Oh. Well, we all loved Frank Sinatra, <laughs> but I can't say he was, he was, at first I didn't like him, but I grew to like him. Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller, mm -hmm. those were, and then, what was their name, the one that, the, the, the one that, the, the blonde, Poplars, beautiful, Diane, Day, Day. Doris Day? Doris Day, Doris. Mm -hmm. she was the one that was popular. Oh, yeah, she's. I still love her movies. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you like Frank at first? He was kind of grew on you, or? Oh, I thought it, I thought it was hard to get along with, because I remember we went someplace and we were having a good time and we were kids talking. He said, "If you're not quiet," he says, "I'm going to leave right now. You be quiet, or I'm leaving this room." Oh wow. He he was it wasn't nice. He he grew. He still never was never in his lifetime, you know. <laughs> yeah, because I remember Carl Cohen at the Sands Hotel. Frank Sinatra was there all the time with with uh, Dean Martin and Joey Lewis and a whole bunch of them. Right. And and uh, Frank Sinatra came into the casino, and Frank and Carl Cohen was a big guy. He was the head, the head man of the scenes. The Sands Hotel, the mm -hmm. biggest, the, the knock, the top man. And Frank Sinatra came in and, and uh, was a real smart athlete and did set something to him. And he just knocked oh, him wow. out. And he never came back to the Sands again. He went to the uh, Caesars to, after that. Mm. He wasn't allowed in the Sands. He never came back to the Sands. Frank Sinatra was not uh, easy to get along with. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that, I think. Yeah. yeah. He had a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you have any, what was your, did you read a lot when you were a Yeah, child? I used to love to read. Yeah. Okay. When I could read, I'd go to the library as much as I could to get a book to read. Mm -hmm. What kind of books were your favorites? Well, about ki kids going on trips. Uh -huh. The Popsy Twins. <laughs> uh -huh. I read all their books. Mm. That was my way of getting away from, that, I, that was my way of, Going on on a trip or going someplace, sure. Because I went with them wherever they went. Right. Yeah. That was like, that's good. Mm -hmm. Put you in the, in the, put you in, 
in your relax your relaxation, you know, which this is what I would like to be doing if I if I could do it. Right. Right. <laughs> Kind of build some dreams. And, and the parents were always so perfect and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Never had any problems, <laughs> did they? My mother and father used to have a lot of problems. Yeah. Oh, my, my God, fathers, they used to cat fat like cat, cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be, they'd come back and be back together again, but they didn't believe in divorce in those days, I don't remember. In those days, you didn't you didn't get angry and divorce your husband. There was right. no such thing as divorce in those days. Right. Yeah. right. And they never even separated even. They didn't do that. They How stopped. old were you when you left uh, Patterson? Oh, I was uh, twenty. Mm -hmm. And that was after you were married, though, right? No, that's oh. when I got married and met my husband and went came to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That's when I came to Las Vegas with him because it's father had the first mortuary business here. Mm -hmm. Had he grown up here, your husband? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he was a real Nevadan. Oh, oh, you were saying, yeah. Yeah, he was real native Nevadan. Mm -hmm. How yeah. did it feel? Were you worried about coming to Las Vegas, to Nevada? Well, I thought it was a new, didn't think anything of it at the time. You're so young. Mm -hmm. You think you're going to have a new life, but it didn't turn out that way because he didn't live very long. Mm. Yeah. Did you have radio shows that you listened to as a kid? I remember one. I remember one that we used to listen to, and I can't remember. I can't remember. And I know it that, sounds like you've had a really interesting life. I don't know what's interesting. Is I had an interesting life because of a uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bert, my husband's father. He was a state senator. I'm trying to think of the county it was anyway. He was a state senator. Lincoln County? Lincoln County. Lincoln. Yeah. yeah, he was a state senator. Mm -hmm. then, and then he uh, came to Las Vegas. He, he came, and Cashman came at the same time. Remember Cashman had the Cashman Cadillac? Mm -hmm. They came to Las Vegas about the same time. They oh. were too proud to go in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So everybody knew them. Right. Right. Did you, so you went into accounting, did you have formal training for that? No, I just took it. I just took to it. So your love of math? Yeah, I did like it. Mm -hmm. How about movie stars? Did you have any favorite movie stars when you were a kid? <laughs> what food did we have at that time? Not, uh, I don't think she was, was she that popular at that time? On most one, I remember Marilyn Monroe. I remember we had like uh, Irene Dunn and all that. Oh, yeah. Irene Dunn and... Uh, Did you have much interest in uh, movies or, you know, celebrities back then or more? Well, you all, you all like to say you knew some of the, some of the celebrities, if, if, celebrities if you did, but mm -hmm. you didn't. Mm -hmm. it had, to be it had to be an opportune time to, to get to meet one of them, the most popular one at that time. That time was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> so you and you said you went to a lot of dances. Did you go to prom? No, just school proms. Just, just school. Everything that do with everything resolved resolved around school. Mm -hmm. And you had to walk miles to get there, and uphill and down, going down the hill. If, if people didn't put the ashes out mm -hmm. when it snowed, you'd never make it down the hill. Mm -hmm. Oh, I never heard of putting ashes on the snow. Yeah, that, well, that people had coal. Had coal uh, stoves then, and mm -hmm. had ashes. Mm -hmm. They didn't have uh, like the heat, this indoor heating like you have now. You had to have your your stoves mm -hmm. that you kept in your kitchen or in uh, in your different rooms, and then you naturally had ashes from the burning the wood. Right, and so they put that on the snow to make it so you could walk on it. Otherwise, you'd never get down the hill. Oh, were did you grow up in a faith? Jeannie, in a religion? Oh, Catholic. My mother was really Catholic. Mm -hmm. She was Catholic all the way. So my father was went along with everything my mother wanted to do. So. How were your holidays? Did you, did you have a favorite holiday, or do you have? We just had Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That was our big holiday, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. And everybody cooked. My mother and father cooked. Mm -hmm. Just, just family. 
Nobody. We didn't have a big family. We didn't have. We didn't have. I only had one cousin. One cousin. Can you imagine? <laughs> and I never saw him. I saw him once. I never saw him again. Hmm. Any stories that you have shared with your kids or not that you would like for them to um, remember? Have anything about a special moment with your dad or your mom or you know a um, friend? The Von Dumbles were very fond of their family. Mm -hmm. They're very close. They were really family people. We were together for as much as we could be when we had holidays or something. Mm -hmm. So your your life changed quite a bit from Patterson, New Jersey, <laughs> to Las I Vegas. Did. I did because mm -hmm. I went to work for the Rancho Vegas. The, with the remember that was a big hotel there then. They <laughs> gave me a big job. I got a good accounting job there. Mm -hmm. And then I thought they they had all these showgirls and everything in there. And, and uh, so finally one day they said, we're going to make you, put you on our, our float. What float? We're going to put you on the float in a bathing suit. We're going to make you a, a star on our float. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know how to do that. I've never done that before. Well, we're going to put you there anyway. Oh, do you have pictures of that? <laughs> we yeah, do. Okay. Yeah. We're going to make you the... You make we'll make your sunshine in in the moon. We have a girl with a with a with a gown with stars and everything. We'll make her night, and that was the the theme was night and day, day and night. Have fun in Las Vegas. Very cool. Day and night have love. Can you tell us about your your wedding to your first husband? Yeah, well, we were just married in St. John's Church. Mm -hmm. That's where I found in 1945, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by now the war is about over. Yeah, he he had come. He had just come home from the war. He was fighting. It was uh, uh, over in Germany, in Germany oh. lines, oh. fighting the Germans. Mm -hmm. He had a rough time too, because yeah. he was a, he's a he was a brilliant man. They put him into the communications department, mm -hmm. and that was something because they had to go into the German lines and and uh, get their messages and everything. And if they ever were caught, they would have been killed right now. Right. They were. They didn't. They wouldn't uh, hesitate mm -hmm. because the Japanese were worse than the Germans. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. They were worse than the Germans. Yeah. No. Yeah. Were. How did you meet your husband? I met him through friends of mine. They. They, they wanted me to go to a dance with him, and I never went out on Saturday night. I always went out on Saturday night, and this one Saturday night I was there, and I. I didn't have any place to go, so they asked me if I would go, and I went with them, and that's how I met him. Was he still in uniform at the time, or yes, was he? he was, yeah, yeah. Was he good looking? Oh yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was really good looking. Yeah, so you liked him as soon as you saw him. Six foot two, yeah. But anyway, life changed for me when I came to Las Vegas. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. How long did you um, date your husband before you married him? Oh, he was overseas for a whole year. Oh, uh huh. So, so you met him, and then he went overseas, uh -huh. and so we knew each other a couple of years. Then. And see, so I imagine. Did you save letters? I imagine you wrote letters. No, no, I didn't save any of them. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't think about those things, right? Just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And well, how did he ask you to marry him? He just he, he just asked me. He came. Through, it came through when he was being discharged from Germany, mm -hmm. coming through New York to go home to Las Vegas or San Francisco. I think they they uh, he got this he was went through uh, not San Francisco I think probably Los Angeles to be discharged mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Veterans Administration. And so that's when he asked me to marry him. So I said yes I would, but my mother. My mother was on the phone, and he was trying to tell my mother to meet me in New York, and he couldn't make my mother understand what he was telling me. So he went through through New York and home, and here I was right just 14 miles away from him. Oh. She, in those days, they, the phone had just come into business. Oh. Isn't it funny how? <laughs> and now what have we got now? Right. Everybody oh. carries a phone. Terry, <laughs> terror. Oh, I, I, I don't even know how to use my cell phone. <laughs> so 
So did he propose to you over the phone? I'm confused. No, we knew before he left that we were going to be married when he came home. Oh. But we didn't know when. Oh, okay. So you got married in Patterson. Do you have any bridesmaids? Just my sister. Yeah. Church wedding or JP? Just a ch church, just in the rectory of the church. In those days, if you weren't both Catholics, you couldn't be married in the church. You had to be married in the rectory. Ah, okay. They were strict in those days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What religion was your husband? He was, he was just a, a, a you know, natural. Protestant, just mm -hmm. not no particular religion. So you guys decided to get married, and he came back from the West Coast. Uh huh. Wow, that's a big trip. Uh huh. Big trip back then. And then you know how we had to get back to to Las Vegas. There was no transportation in those days. We couldn't get on an airplane or anything. We had to take a Greyhound bus to get to Las Vegas. Oh wow. <laughs> so that was was that your honeymoon? Well, part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Had you ever been west of Patterson at that point? No. It no. was the first time ever, right? Right. Wow. That's a big change. Mm -hmm. well, I, came, I came to Las Vegas to meet his folks, wow. who I dearly loved. He had the best, he had the best folks. Yeah. He had the nicest folks I ever met. Yeah. We were very close. We were very close to him. That, that is he was an adopted son, so they, they really made a fuss over him. So you moved to Las Vegas. Where did you? Where was your first home in Las Vegas? <laughs> on the corner of Six and Stork Street, there's a big home on the corner, a big oh, home, yeah, with a big porch and everything, mm -hmm. which was very nice at that time. People used to, you know, walk by. You walked every place then. Mm -hmm. You did, and I was just down the street from the Alcatraz Hotel, and I got my first job right down there. I just walked in and got a job. Nice. The girl put me into a, the girl there, she saw I was good in accounting, she put me in the accounting department. And then she went, and from there, they sold the, the Nevada Biltmore Hotel, and she, she asked me to come over there and work for her there, and I did. And then she had a chance to go with Horace Heights, Horace Heights, remember Horace Heights? Mm -hmm. Music? Oh, anyway, they went to work with them wanted me to come with them, be with them, uh -huh. to go with them, be their assistant, but I said, I can't, I can't leave, I can't leave my husband and my child. Oh, they wanted you to leave town. I would have had to leave town, yeah. Wow. You must have been very good at what you did. Yes, yeah, I was good. Yeah. I was, when I was only at the uh, Rancho Vegas, I was there a month and he made me assistant auditor. But yeah. that's when Bugsy Siegel came into town, mm -hmm. and the auditor that was at our hotel went over to the Flamingo mm -hmm. to take care of Bugsy Siegel and that group. So then he asked me if I would take her place in El Rancho Vegas. But that was a big change when Bugsy Siegel came into town. Yeah. <laughs> I never saw such a change in the town. You had your first child at this time, though. Yeah, I did already. Uh -huh. And was that you, Julie? No, that was my oldest brother, John. He's... It was just you and John? No, there was the, my mom was, my mom had my oldest brother from her first husband from Carol, and then my dad had his kids from his first wife. Both of them lost their spouses, and then they married and had two more kids, and that's myself and my younger brother. Oh, okay. So we're a blended family. A Brady lot bunch. like the Brady Bunch. The Brady yeah. Bunch plus two. <laughs> it was everybody, everybody and somebody else's. Yeah, yeah. This one girl, the one daughter was adopted. How soon after you moved to Las Vegas did you have John? Oh, about a year. One year. Yeah, when's John's birthday? The 20... July 24th, 1946. 46, okay. And did you work while um, you were pregnant? Up, up to a certain point, yeah, I did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you went right back to work? Or... No, I didn't go back to work till later on when this lady who knew how I, how I worked at the El Rancho Vegas when I don't know how she got me. She was the one that was with the, went with Horace Height, and mm -hmm. she wanted me to go with her. Mm -hmm. She's the one that got me the job at the El Rancho. Gotcha. Told the, the auditor about that 
I was qualified to do that job. Sure. So you did the traditional staying at home and with the baby for a while. Yeah, for about six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's there's not no much to our life. My life is simple. 